Black Hat 650 Gaming here, and welcome to a very weird video. This is PC Building Simulator IRL. It's really creepy because I have a camera person today. It's my sister. It's weird. Um, anyway. I missed. We're upgrading the uh, VR PC, or VR computer. Uh, what I use for hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenade. Don't mind the dog. Nobody really cares. There will be a dog in this video. that will just give me more views. Um, upgrading the VR PC for hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades, and Beat Saber, and all the like. And it's really cool right now because my chest is itchy right next to the microphone, so it'll sound really nice. But <laughs> it's not a high budget channel, so. Uh, but uh, this is the VR computer. That's the dog. Um, and inside it right now is an AMD 8350 processor, uh, which is slightly overclocked for all the. PC people who give a flying fuck. Um, I believe it's about 4.1 gigahertz, give or take. It has in it. Uh, Corsair H80i GT water cooler, 16 gigabytes of uh, 1830, 1866 RAM, and a GTX 1070. So we're gonna go from all of those things to an AMD Ryzen 5 2600, something I've never had any experience with. We're probably not using the cooler that came with it because I still have the one with the 1700 on my main computer. Uh, using some Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM 3000 megahertz, 16 gigabytes. Why do I go less? It's the only plebs to that shit. And much to my dismay, uh, MSI X470 Gaming Plus motherboard, I despise the, AMA, the MSI BIOS, but fuck it was cheap, so. Oh, a motherboard in this is a 990 UD3. No, it's the 990 Gaming. So that was gonna be like some cut or some shit, I don't fucking know. And it's gonna go to this computer's insides. Cool. Alright, so. That's all, folks. Addendum. Uh, graphics card is 1070 still, but it's the EVGA GeForce GTX. If I remember correctly, it is the Black Edition which means next to nothing, but whatever. Oh, and power supply is a EVGA 650 watt, 52 gold, woohoo. Um, so. Now I don't work with this case often, so it might take me a minute. So we're gonna go graphics card first. Um, this might just end up being a time lapse for the most part because it's not that interesting, but whatever. So. Oh, uh. Last I hate shank where he's gonna be using. I don't remember which one that is. It's I think that's the mid-tier one, and then I assume what comes with the 2600 is the lower end one. So I've already obviously unplugged and turned off the power supply. We've got our high quality storage here. It's just floating in there because don't question my methods. Uh screwdriver. Stat. So if anyone knows nothing of computers, really this is actually very simple, except for I can't get to the latch to unplug the or unhook this. Hey. But it always looks really scary and complex, and I'm gonna be absolutely horrible. My watch is inside, I'm done getting exercise. And I'm just gonna set this expensive ass graphic card on the carpet. Off to the side. Like a pro. Um Right, let's go ahead. We just gonna unhook all the I/O and shiznit from the motherboard. I don't know how well you'll see that. I'm not gonna bother lifting that up though. So USB 3.0 and the buttons and hard drive light and all of that crap that everyone hates. And uh, the audio for the front of the computer because I definitely use that. Uh, let's get this massive 24, I believe, pin. Something like that. Uh, main power. Oh shit! I can't. <laughs> I have to take this off first because I can't get the CPU power. Hey, is this the H80 IGT? I think it's like the V2 or some shit. I've had it for a few years. Uh, 120 millimeter radiator. Mm, worked okay for the 8350. If anyone knows AMD stuff, you'll know that basically this is a thermal nuclear reactor um, in terms of heat dissipation and whatnot not heat dissipation. The processor gets real fucking hot. 
but whatever. Uh, so two 120 fans, uh, Corsair, oddly enough. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna very gently chuck that shit in there. There's the CPU power. Anything else? Uh, we'll undo some fans for some reason. Okay, I'm gonna take care of the water cooler, the uh, thermal paste and everything once I have this out, because it's gonna be kind of a pain in the ass otherwise. Not that this won't be a pain in the ass. So after about seven hours, I've gotten all of the screws out and possibly an extra thing. And I also just remembered I'm not reusing any of this stuff. So once I actually remember to unhook the uh, SSD and such, there we go, you can just yank this out of the computer very gently using force. Perfect. Okay. Great. So there we go. Got an entire computer. Let me double check how that there aren't anything, that there aren't anything. There's nothing on the bottom of there. <laughs> there is a standoff on the bottom of the board. Whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna be here a couple days. Ah, uh, this is cross threaded. Nailed it. All right, this also probably isn't even meant for this board. All right. Usually when you're first building a computer, you don't have this problem. Oh, this hole is all stripped to hell as well. But yeah, for those that don't know, again, uh, these little tiny brass nibs in here are the standoffs that hold the motherboard off of this. Uh, since this is made out of metal and the bottom of the motherboard is a bunch of solder points that are remarkably sharp, um, it would short out and cause all sorts of problems. So now we've got all this shiznit out. Um, got two wires for the hard drives, the million wires for IO, and power supply stuff. And we got a fan back here as well. Not all cases have that. That's just, this is an Antec something or other. I didn't buy it, so I don't know. All right, let's actually scooch that out of the way like a professional would with a foot. That's, that's, yeah. Let's try and finish a sentence at some point. Unbox this bitch. So like I said, it's the MSI X470 Gaming Plus AMD motherboard. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it looks like a motherboard for some reason. Uh, so all motherboards come in these weird ass uh, bags. They are ESD bags, like static discharge or whatever. And just keep everything from shorting out, which is especially good since I'm sitting on carpet. And all of these pros will be like, don't pile the computer on carpet. It doesn't matter, dude. All right, so these gaming boards always have these metal things around these that make it stronger and better. We got the socket here that we don't want to touch because that'll all sorts of ruin things fucked up. Don't worry about my small stroke, it's fine. Uh, battery keeps everything working correctly. This board has onboard IO, uh, DVI and HDMI port. Not all have that, especially not AMD. Most AMD boards don't have it. And this has a special power plug on it that I didn't know about and might cause problems, but whatever. We'll set that back over there, we don't care that much. And uh, we've got all of the wonderful add-on crap. So a disc of your drivers is useless. Sticker, 
the best part about getting new computer hardware. Thank you for choosing Shutting Up. Uh, these are kind of handy if you have a bunch of things. You wrap it around your SATA cable and it marks what it is. Quick installation guide. Stand up notification. What? Whatever. The user manual. You now know everything. What is, what? It kind of <laughs> It came with a single screw. I'd show you, but it's not worth it. It's for the M.2 drive. You might be able to see. It says M.2 screw. Because, you know, why not? And there's a dog. There go the views climbing up. Um, oh, I'm sorry. It came with two M.2 screws in separate bags. Because, just because. Uh, two SATA cables, one with an angled end, woohoo. And that's the IO shield, which keeps things from accumulating dust and also shorting it up. Fantastic. So this will be chucked off to the side very gently and probably hung on the wall. All right, so let's take a look at the RAM real quick. RAM is always confusing on how to open it. Ah, uh, tape. When in doubt, fuck it up. And always cut towards yourself. Don't cut towards yourself. I'm not liable for any injuries. That'll hold up in court, right? All right, uh, RAM, you know, that really all looks the same. It's two sticks. Although the stuff I have in my main computer looks cooler than this, just saying. Uh, then, like I said, Vengeance LPX, we've got the best, one of the other best parts of new hardware in a second when I start to peel it. The peelies. Ah, and there's two of them. And a dog. Yeah. I'll peel the other one on my own. Uh, so yeah, two sticks that. 8 gigabytes each, 16 gigabytes total. Knife. Open. AMD Ryzen 5 2600, uh, 6 cores, 12 threads, 3.9 gigahertz max boost <laughs> for now. Uh, discrete graphics card required, so it has no onboard graphics, so all of the fancy stuff on this board is completely useless. Oh, look. It's installation instructions. Uh, plastic. The heat sink it comes with, let's see if it's actually the same exact one as what I have. It looks like it might actually be. Oh no. Nope. All right. So this is, this is the cheap ass, super small version. Um, comes with thermal paste on the bottom, which is actually interesting. I'll get to why in a second. Uh, this whole thing is made of aluminum which is one reason why it's the cheapest one. It has no RGB around the sides. It is basic ass heat sink. Um, that probably just ruined the thermal paste on that, whatever. This is the one that came with the 1700. You can see a lot thicker uh, dog. Red light will go all the way around up to there, real fancy looking, much thicker. And on the bottom, it's got a round thing of thermal paste, and that I find quite interesting. And it's also got a copper plate on the bottom for better heat. And then, the all-important Ryzen 5 processor. Wow. With a sticker. That camera makes really weird noises. Um, bottom of it, all gold pins. Don't touch those. We'll fuck it up. Um, so yeah, that's the unboxing. Woohoo! Let's go put it together for the most part and then we'll shove it in a case. Yeah. All right, so after sitting and trying to find more wires for this nonsense, I've given up. Um, I'm hoping since this motherboard is really more meant for things like the 2700 and whatnot, that it won't be a problem since it's only a 2600. But if it is, then War were declared. All right. 
Oh, actually, let's start with this. So we got the motherboard, and we got the processor. We'll take the awesome, very small Ryzen 5 sticker off and crack this open. And first off, actually, I'm gonna grab hold of the case just for a second. That will discharge any static from my body. Let's actually flip it over. Anyway, so I'm not gonna even attempt to show you because it's very small, but there's a tiny little golden arrow on this. And we're gonna lift up this little arm first as well. Uh, and the arrow will correspond to a tiny little indentation on the motherboard facing that way. And you wanna make sure that they line up, otherwise it doesn't work very well. It actually might not even go in. Let's double check. And then so get my hair. Just sort of set it in there and then push it down. There will be resistance and that's usually what freaks people out, but it's fine. And now what's really cool is this came with this bracket on it that is completely useless for the uh, heatsink that even comes with the motherboard. So we're going to hope that I don't need to take the back bracket thing off and we're just gonna unscrew this. So I'm assuming then that this just uses the same hardware. So we're gonna, so we've got two options on how this can go on since it's sort of a rectangle either this way or this way. However, this case doesn't have any holes in the side of it to see it, so it's completely irrelevant. And so we're gonna kind of set that on there and then if you know car stuff, then you know you have to do it in a sort of star pattern. Same goes for this, uh, putting a tire on that is. So kind of cross over the sides for an even pressure. And then undo the other side when you find out that the other one didn't even go in. Derp. So after some more fighting, I finally got that screw in um, and should have actually put it the other way because the CPU fan header is on that side. But it doesn't matter. We'll just set that in there like that. So we're going to do RAM next. Now RAM, RAM is special. It's not the RAM's fault. It's the motherboard's fault. So see these red slots? You have to use the red slots first. But really simple, only goes in one way because the there is a tiny little notch there. Doesn't matter. Um, and it's slightly off center, so sort of slot it in there. And then, since I'm on carpet, I'm gonna use my hands and it kind of clicks in there. They both flip up and yeah. Same with the next one, facing the same way. And it sits in there. There we go. If it's kind of off out of sync, they don't both click at the same time. You need to panic and go buy a new motherboard because it's ruined. Not really, it's completely fine. Um, more fancy motherboards. I don't actually know why this one doesn't have it. Well, A, it has its sticker on here that's coming off already. Um, they usually have like a big block around the IO and all that stuff for no actual reason. It just looked cool. All right, so we got all that stuff. Now we need to bring the case back in real quick. <sighs> All right, so not all cases have this big ass, or well actually it's very small. Not all cases have that fan in there that you probably can't actually see. Um, but yeah, this part's pretty simple. It's gonna be another real quick time-lapse thing of putting screws back in. Um, I need to adjust how I'm sitting and sort of shove this in here. But not completely because I almost forgot to put in the IO shield. So if you're familiar with Legos, you know, the, that was almost bad. The uh, the real stiff bags that they come in sometimes, that's kind of what those bags are like. It's kind of weird. I just sort of, it goes in this back bit and it kind of clicks in sometimes, but not all the time. And it's got all these sharp bits on it and you know, 
as with all parts of a computer, it's mean and probably sharp and will hurt if you do it wrong. Or if you do it right sometimes. Alright, so that's in there and you kind of just make sure the wire's out of the way. Usually if you're starting from scarch, if you're starting from scarch, you don't usually have all the wires in the way. You just kind of shove that in there and line it up with the uh, the motherboard standoffs. And then you kind of see if there are any need to any standoffs you need to add. It used to be that you get several million screws and standoffs with these, but mm, that is not so anymore. So let's screw this in. All right, so the motherboard is in, all screwed up, <laughs> puns. Um, all right, so next up is the graphics card. It's really difficult to put in. Um, so you gotta make sure this is pushed down first, otherwise it gets kind of difficult. So it kind of slots in there, it kind of sits in weirdly and then sits in the slot and then you push it down and then you question all of your methods because it made a weird noise. And then it clicks in, all right, and it's fine. So lightly lift up, make sure it doesn't fly out. And then the thing, this thing goes back on, well, in this case, it sits on the back, kind of pushes down. It's supposed to have two screws in it. Let's see, I need two of them for the case side. Well, whatever, this might work. Where did I put the screwdriver? Right here, genius. Uh, yeah, this will work. All right, so not all cases have the PCI lock, I believe it's called. Actually, I was supposed to put the screw on the graphics card first. Whatever. Well, I'm out of screws, so it doesn't matter. Am I? I am out of screws. It'll be fine. Um, and then I will sit here and realize that I shouldn't have put that in first. I should have plugged in the USB 3.0 first, but it's fine. So the USB, USB 3.0 cable is fairly easy if you don't have a graphics card in the way and other wires. In this, you know what, let's just do it the easy way. Most cases have it down here on the bottom of the motherboard. There's a little nub on the top of the wire, lines up with a small slot sits in there, real complicated. Then your HD audio, which is for the front uh, microphone and headphone headers on the front, usually less tangled up in all of the other wires. But what I, I'm not gonna be very gentle with this because I don't usually use front headers anyway. That just sits there. And now we have the one that will make things complicated. Where they even go? Oh, right here? Yep. Oh, and there. All right, we've got two tiny little point or pins, two tiny little sets of pins, and all of these tiny ass wires. So that's gonna also be a little bit of a time lapse because this takes forever because you gotta put them in the right way, and it's just a pain in the ass. So I'll be back in several days once I have this done. Okay, fantastic. Several limbs have been lost, but it is plugged in. Now we have the SATA cables. These are kind of a pain in the ass. You might not be able to see them very well. Yeah. So they got the little clips. Clip needs to face up. 
I found that you usually have to kind of go in at a little bit of an angle, not like a super serious angle, but we're going to plug this into the bottom one first, which is usually easy when there isn't one on top of it, and then the top one. You don't always need to go at an angle, but sometimes you do. Really easy with this one because I only have the CD drive and the loosely sitting in the case SSD. Um, which one is this? This uh, graphics card power. Not all graphics cards need this. But this one does. It sits in there. Um, basically it doesn't get enough power through the motherboard so it just has an extra probably 24 volts going to it. And I got the motherboard cable which is the big ass long one sits in there, it usually sits at a really awkward position so that you can't actually sit it in there without the wire being all jank. And then CPU power, which if you have a big heatsink, massive pain in the ass. I cannot tell you how many times I've cut up my hand because I put the heatsink on first and it fucking takes up all the space. You gotta squeeze your hand in there. But that should be everything. A little quick overview to myself. You're not allowed to look, you know. Power, blah, blah, blah. Gently set that down. Um, I don't know how the fan on the back is getting power, but it's probably fine. It's probably magic. Uh, the fans on the front, usually you would plug into the motherboard, but in this case, they're powered through Molex, which is a four pin connector that we don't really use anymore except for fans. And then we're gonna take the side panel that still has a Core i3 sticker on the side. And we're gonna kinda of set it on there and you're gonna stop being able to see things. I'm gonna plug this fan in. Am I? I am. See, the side panel fans seem really nice because they get extra air in there. But then you gotta plug them in. And they stop seeming so nice then. What am I, is this the right thing? Wait for it. Wait for it. Got it. Fantastic. And then we'll put the screws on this and plug it in and everything should be all sorts of dandy and fantastic. Yay. All right, so everything's put together. Drivers are installed. It's not on fire. So let's try and set it on fire. So we're gonna run the legit Time Spy benchmark. Uh, actually, we're gonna do it slightly differently because this runs a demo thing first that takes like fucking an hour. Not really, it's a couple minutes, but ooh, not Time Spy Extreme. That will not end well. That's for 4K stuff. We want the nice calm one. So of course, if you know computer stuff, you'll know Kingpin is of course on top being the king, since he is like the master overclocker and is scary. So we're gonna run this. I have a time, not a time, a number, which is like time. I'm not stalling, you're stalling. I have the score of the last iteration with the AMD 8350 processor and same graphics card with the respective scores for those written down. But we have a score of 5,306 to beat eventually, when it loads. So one weird thing I've noticed with PC Building Simulator is it starts off with the CPU test, whereas this will end with the CPU test. It does graphics tests first here. I don't know why it, that is. I don't know, maybe it's different in other countries or some weird shit like that. Yes, thank you, GeForce Experience. I definitely want you to run while I'm doing a benchmark. Wait for it. It's done loading, but it's not really. All right. This will be really interesting since there's no sound. It looks nice though.
kind of a creepy ass CPU test. This is like some weird, growing, creepy shit. I was going somewhere else with that, but I kind of forgot where in the middle of the sentence. I'm very tired. Creepy. Creepy weird tentacle things. This takes a lot less time in PC building simulator. That is fucking creepy. Alright, and now we get the score. Let's see, if it's lower, I'm gonna fucking go jump out a window or some shit. Okay, so last score was 5,306. This score, obviously, 6,133. It has improved by like six, seven, enough. Not six or seven, dumbass. Like nine hundred, give or take. Oh, and it turned. Uh, so that's a graphics score of 6,171. Um, oh, interesting. The last one was 6,114. So the C or GPU score increased as well. <laughs> CPU score went from 3,034 to 5,930. So there you go. Everything is better. Probably. So I guess that's going to do it for this video then. Woohoo. So if you enjoyed it, leave a like. Um, you can leave a comment telling me all the things I did wrong. There's probably a lot. Um, if you didn't enjoy this video, don't leave a like, and I'll see you in the next video.